Thanks, Mark. I want to talk to you today about the technology that powers our platform. It consists of two components, our infrastructure and our APIs. And I'd like to tell you about how we use it. But before I do that, let's talk about the technology and in invention that drives our games, because that is ultimately what powers our platform. It's also the magic that makes our games the most fun and the most social experiences on the internet. Social games are meant to be casual forms of entertainment. They enhance relationships. They help you meet someone new, connect with someone familiar. They're an always-on experience designed to bring people the best 15 minutes of their day. These are my cousins. I almost never speak to my cousins face to face. Uh, the woman on the top is a, a director of communications at Greenpeace. The guy with the cigarette is an architect who loves Cityville, and the guy on the bottom is, uh, makes wine. Um, they live in Greece. I don't get to talk to them very much. But the way we stay in touch is through Castleville and Hidden Chronicles. Seeing my cousins collect rent on my Cityville game board is a small reminder of our connection. I interact with their board, they interact on mine, and, and I love that. I love that connection we create. And if we do our jobs right, it's a world I don't want, but there's a world my cousins don't get to see. And if we do our job right, it's a world I don't want them to ever realize that's there. This is a world where casual social games take serious engineering, serious scale, serious analytics to make them run. What many people don't realize is that building and keeping a social game fresh and exciting for players is really, really hard. Hardest for even the most established game companies. But why is that? Well, think back to 2007. Games, just like software, were trapped in these little boxes. They lived on shelves. Uh, they didn't require ongoing support after you put it in the hands of the player. We don't ship plastic boxes. We ship a live service, a live service that allows millions of players to connect at the same time. Our daily highs of concurrent players is roughly the size of everyone in the city of Paris playing together at the same time. And that happens every single day. And the games we make are living, breathing world, kind of like this one. Uh, they constantly change every second of every day for every single player. And each player wants a new experience. They want to play with their friends in new ways. And on top of that, we operate in a world that's ever-changing. Technology is constantly evolving. Browser requirements change. New mobile devices are introduced to the market. New tablets come to the market. So how do we do it? We figured out early on that in order to operate games as a live service, our entire engineering culture needs to be built around speed. We release updates to our games faster than any company on the planet because our players want new content. Most web companies are accustomed to releasing a few updates to their site every day, maybe one or two. The most progressive web startups might release somewhere in the ballpark of 10 to 20. We release about 100 updates across all of our games each day. We've released upwards of 1,000 features in a given week. Now, if you think we create a lot of content, and we create a lot of content, and we do it very quickly, it's absolutely dwarfed by the amount of content our players create. Every single action our players take, the rent my cousins collect in Cityville, the words they play in Words with Friends, the pictures they draw and draw something, it all adds up to about one million activities per second. Think about that for a second. OK, that thought, that was another million actions. Our ability to deliver content quickly to our players and the rate at which they consume it and create content of their own, all of this, in its totality, is something that the internet has never seen before. And because of that, we had to build our own infrastructure. Our infrastructure consists of two things, hardware and services. We didn't just build it because we wanted to build it. We built it because we believe, and we have demonstrated, that we can innovate in hardware and services to deliver amazing value to our players. Let me talk a little bit about that amazing hardware. Uh, we call it ZCloud. ZCloud is our private cloud that we couple with the public cloud to create, to scale our games. Together, it gives Zynga the world's largest hybrid cloud. ZCloud is built like a race car for social games, and it's equipped to run on almost any track. It's why we can launch a game 
and within a week grow it to 10 million players. In one day, 2.8 million people started playing Castleville. It holds the record as our fastest growing game in a single day, and it was scaled solely on zCloud. In fact, our zCloud is so fast and so perfectly built for the racetrack of social games, we migrated more than 80% of our game traffic from the public cloud onto it. And because we can tune our infrastructure, it's three times more efficient. For example, uh, where our games in the public cloud would require three servers, on zCloud, they only use one. zCloud is just one of the efficiencies we've invented throughout our infrastructure. And thanks to zCloud, our talented game makers don't need to worry about things like having enough servers to run, the servers being up and available. It's just there, and it works. Now, let me talk about some of the services that live on top of our hardware. At Zynga, we're an intellectually curious bunch. Uh, we're uh, lifelong learners. And the fuel that powers this intelligence is the crown jewel of Zynga services, analytics. Our analytics is unprecedented not only for games, but almost across every industry. We run, for example, about 130 experiments in our games per day and thousands per week to find out what players want. What's more amazing is that after releasing a new feature in a game to millions of players, we can find out within minutes, yes, minutes, if those millions of players enjoyed it. Then our game studios can release more features just like that. This ensures that the 100 features we release per day are the, are the ones our players find fun. And beyond what knowing what players find fun, we also want to make it social. We learned that what makes a game fun is when you play it with other people. Sounds obvious, right? Uh, but what we realized was that it doesn't really matter how many of my friends become my neighbor in Cityville. What matters is that my friends, my cousins, continue to play with me, that they continue to be active. And because we're geeks, or at least I'm a geek, we came up with a term to measure this. We call it your active social network, or ASN. Let me repeat that because it's really important. Your active social network, ASN. Your ASN is the true barometer of social. It's a measure of how many people are actively playing with each other. We're not about just doing fun. We're about doing fun and social. ASN helps us find the social. This science helps us build features for our players that are both social and fun. It's insights like these that allow us to sustain a game like Farmville, one that rocketed to 30 million people playing each day and keep it at the top of the charts three years later. So what do we do with all of these insights? Well, we connect our entire player network together, the 290 million people that play our games each month. We've built services to make intelligent matches between those players. We call that service matchmaking. What's so hard, and it is hard actually, isn't building the matchmaking feature itself, it's intelligently finding and making recommendations of who you'd be most likely to play with. That's the hard science problem we spend time working on. By wrapping that functionality into a service like matchmaking, we make it easier for our studios to tap into our player network and surface the games or features to more players. We recently did some cool work on our back-end technology to become more efficient, and I'm really excited about this tech. We call that optimized game mechanics, and we built a brand new architecture that our Bubble Safari Studio leverage. That architecture is part of what we internally have codenamed Darwin. With that component inside of Darwin, we've moved from developing games as a client and a server to writing it once once. This literally cuts the software requirements in half. It cuts the required servers by 90% because we're running less code. That component, built by our India team, let our Bubble Safari Studio go faster, be more robust, and more efficient at the same time. And that's amazing. It's like magic. I mean, it is really like magic, because that normally never happens in software. That, that it, there's all a trade-off between performance, efficiency, and reliability. It's as if you could race a car at 100 miles an hour at 1,000 horsepower, never get in a car accident, and never get pulled over. With Bubble Safari, with Bubble Safari, we figured out a way to build it faster, with fewer errors, and consume less infrastructure. Best of all, we're rolling this out across all of our games. We're now able to build games faster, that are more cost-efficient to run, and deliver a better player experience. 
So after we did all that, after we matured our hardware and our services, we said, okay, how can we make it go faster? How can we make it easier for our studios to build games, deliver more content for players faster? As we built up a lot of these services, we never stopped to think too hard about how to make them easier to use. We were too busy building them. Our services required a lot of custom back-end code that made it hard for our game teams to leverage. Today, I'm proud to announce a new, more efficient API layer that we've developed, the Zynga API. The Zynga API is a central, more efficient way for our game teams to tap into our game services to make their games more fun and more social. No longer do our studios need back-end servers just to integrate with our services. Zynga Slots, which we recently launched on iOS, was the first game to access the new Zynga API. What's more, now that we have back-end services that don't require back-end servers, we can open it up to the world, and we plan to do just that. Just like my cousins, our internal studios, and now soon, third parties, will be able to focus on what they do best. Enjoy and create beautiful games, and not ever have to worry about the tech behind it. Now I'd like to turn it over to Manuel Bronstein and Reed Schaffner.